What's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys a video, and today we're doing What If Naruto Was Raised on Miyaboku, Episode 1. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. In this timeline, Hiruzen becomes afraid of the idea of Danza making Naruto a weapon for his own personal affairs. He'll most likely steal Naruto and use him in his own agenda to do god knows what. Hiruzen thinks of all the strongest people he knows best suited to raise the boy. No one clan can possess a Jinchuriki, so that rules out quite a number of candidates. Being the Hokage, he could bypass this rule, however him being so busy looking after the village, Danzo could still manage to get in contact with him and steal him. Minato's old student Kakashi has made quite a name for himself with his transplant Sharingan, however he seems too young. That, and he's too immature to handle such a big responsibility. I left one candidate in Haruzen's mind. He contacted Jiraiya and asked him to meet up with him in the leaf. Explain the situation to him. Jiraiya was an interest in adopting any child. It'd make it hard for him to keep her spy work, as well as make him less of a hit with the ladies. Furuzen pleaded with Jiraiya, trying to appeal to his morals. Minato was a student, and Jiraiya was the boy's godfather. He can't just let Naruto become a tool for someone else. After a loud sigh, Jiraiya looks at Furuzen and gives him an ultimatum. If he can find someone suitable for a job to raise him, will that be okay? Furuzen agrees, trusting Jiraiya since he did train him. The council meet up with Ruzen and Jiraiya about the situation where the trio are in disagreement. The Nine Tails is an important military asset, so if we take him out of the village, we'll make the Leaf seem weak and vulnerable, making the whole concept of Jinchuriki obsolete. Knowing how important this is to Ruzen, Jiraiya thinks on his feet and splits out suggestion. Naruto can be taken away and trained. When he reaches the age of graduation, he has to be brought back to take the Genin exams and become a Leaf Shinobi. This gives them the best of both worlds, so the council would have to agree against Danza's better judgement. Jiraiya would take the baby Naruto and use reverse summoning to appear in Mount Miyaboku. He'd drive at Fukusaku and Shima's house, shocking them as they saw Jiraiya holding a weeping baby. Shima takes Naruto off of Jiraiya and begins to cradle him, instantly stopping him crying, making the third stage grin witnessing this. He explains the situation to the duo, asking them to take care of the child, which they agree to since they know the importance of such a task. Naruto would be raised with toads, and learns to befriend them all slowly over time. He'd come to see Fukusaku and Shima as his parents as they essentially raise him, and appeal to his inner interests, training, and food. Since he hasn't had any real food, he thinks Shima's food is to die for. As for Fukusaku, he began training Naruto at quite a young age, to complete the task that the leaf wanted from him. He'd ask other toads to help Naruto with his taijutsu, since his old body would be harder for Naruto to fight. I mean that Naruto would adopt a toad-like taijutsu style, as well as also learning how to wield the sword. He himself would try to teach Naruto how to use better chakra control by teaching him tree walking and water walking. I could also see Naruto meditating to try and best refine it. Fukusaku would teach Naruto a very easy jutsu to learn to try and get him to use the right amount of chakra in his attacks and be very more useful. Water release, water bullet technique. You come to find later that Naruto's affinity is wind, however it is handy to learn another nature transformation. Jiraiya would have contact with Naruto and spars with him to see how he's coming along. Despite how Naruto is currently, he would not be allowed to graduate the academy without a transformation jutsu and a clone jutsu, and would tell Fukusaku this. The older Toto replied to Jiraiya that Naruto's chakra control will never truly be refined enough to learn the regular clone jutsu, so he'll need a substitute. Jiraiya takes it upon himself to teach Naruto the shadow clone jutsu, telling him how to train with it. It wouldn't take long for Naruto to pick up this jutsu, especially with a mentor teaching him. Naruto's seal on the Kyubi would have been weakened to what it was in Shippuden, however due to the peaceful environment Naruto lives in, he's never awoken any of the chakra, not even the whiskers and eye that is most commonly seen. Now let's discuss the elephant in the room. Does Naruto have sage mode? Well no. It's quite dangerous, so Naruto had only been being taught how to use Senjutsu when he's around 11 to 12, and will be able to do it alone to practice it, otherwise he risks death, and the toads aren't going to risk that. He would have a basic understanding needed, and is well on his way to learn it, but he hasn't fully grasped it yet. Jiraiya would come to Miyaboku and find Naruto, telling him that tomorrow morning they're going to the Leaf Village, so he can do the Genin exam. He's a bit worried to be leaving, but is reassured by Jiraiya that people in the Leaf are kind, and there will be a lot of people looking out for him. That night, there's a massive party of every toad coming over to say goodbye to Naruto. As a passing gift, Naruto will be given the summoning contract, so if he needs anything, one of them will come to his aid. Let's jump to the leaf and talk about them. Mizuki would need to trick a Genin to steal the scroll's ceiling for him, and thinks about who the dumbest person would be. He'd ask to speak with Kiba in private, and tells him about the scroll, which a knuckle-headed ninja and his dog steal, not knowing any better. Kiba goes out into the woods and begins training, learning the Shadow Clone Jutsu. 
You can only create one Shadow Clone, but for Kiba that has a lot of usage. Sume and Kurumaru quickly find the duo and scold them about the situation when they learn that Mizuki has double crossed the leaf. Sume sniffs Mizuki nearby and quickly takes him down, reporting everything to Lord Third, and thusly all is forgiven. Genin teams are assigned with the same teams as normal. When Team 7 is announced, both well, Sasuke and Sakura are confused about who their third member is on their team. Kakashi arrives and tells Sasuke and Sakura where to meet him before rushing off. There, they spot Naruto sitting like a toad with a blank stare. Everyone will discuss their interests with Sasuke paying close attention when Naruto speaks. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. My likes are fly catching, Mars cooking, and playing with Gamakichi and Gamatatsu. My dislikes are hawks and snakes and other predators. My dream is... hmm... To become Chief Toad, I guess. That just leaves more questions than answers to the Uchiha. The bell test arrives and Naruto attacks Kakashi right at the bat, as that's how his fights usually start since there's no point in hiding from a massive toad. Using shadow clones and sword swings, Naruto makes Kakashi have a great interest in the boy, especially when seeing his water bullet technique. Sasuke analyzes this from afar, amazed at this boy's skills. He seemingly came out of nowhere and he can already do a nature transformation. As normal, Kakashi uses the 1000 years of death, and Naruto lands in a nearby pond. Kakashi goes to pull out his book and begins to leave until he hears splashes behind him. The pond itself begins to shake as a bunch of water bullets fire out at Kakashi, making him have to dodge. He wasn't predicting for Shadow Clones to leap out, going to grab the bells. One of the hands of the Shadow Clones grasps the bells, while Kakashi uses a substitution jutsu to escape. All clones disperse as the actual Naruto swims out of the pond and begins to bounce through the trees like a toad looking for Kakashi. He's caught by Sasuke standing in front of him, asking how Naruto got so strong. I was trained by a very big toad on a faraway secret mountain that no one can else can get to. Naruto doesn't have self-awareness, so he doesn't understand that what he just said is a bit nonsensical. Sasuke sees this as mocking, and launches himself at Naruto, wanting to test his power, but he's also a bit angry that someone would dare mock him. The duo get into a taijutsu spa, with Naruto's toad taijutsu presenting an issue with Sasuke. It's too unpredictable, which makes him struggle to keep up. He leaps back and fires a fireball jutsu at Naruto, uses a water bullet to extinguish the attack. In the steam, a shadow appears, and as soon as a flash, both Naruto and Sasuke are tied up with rope. They are tied to posts as so Sakura is given both lunches. She of course gives some to Sasuke, who tells her to give some to Naruto as well, making Team 7 pass. Naruto would be given a temporary residence to live in, however he doesn't use the bare house he's given. He'd rather live in the nearby forest of the environment, as to feel in his own element. He'd meet with some toads around the area, and although they aren't like the others being regular, they do remind him of home. Naruto is a regular nature and makes Sasuke annoyed at his strength, making him train a bit harder, not feeling comfortable to be at his level. He'd do some research about Naruto's fighting style, like how he uses a sword and how he utilizes a water element. However, he won't understand how to counter the fighting style. The only way to do that would be with a Sharingan, but he doesn't possess one. Not yet, anyway. The Tatsuna Escort mission would begin like normal. However, Tatsuna would make different insults about Naruto being weird. Since Naruto never truly experienced normal human interaction, he did not even register the insult, instead paying attention to a nearby fly. As they move, Naruto would begin to play along the way, bouncing along the trees and puddles like a typical toad would. There's something they'd be able to notice when one of the puddles is regular, and pulls out his sword to stab whatever doors within, believing it might be an eel. The demon brothers leap out and dodge a stab from Naruto, who looks at the duo in confusion. They just ruin puddles. To prove a point, Sasuke leaps at the demon brothers and quickly subdues them, trying to prove his dominance over Naruto to everyone, only getting Sakura to notice. As they move along, Sasuke would go over to Kakashi and ask him about Naruto to see what his sensei knows. Kakashi would give his typical aloof answers, which doesn't give Sasuke much information, other than how he comes from far away and was raised by toads. At least explains his weird behavior. Zabuza would dump the group, as normal, and places Kakashi in a water prison jutsu, leaving the Genin to save him. Naruto just asks why Kakashi doesn't swim out, which gets Zabuza to laugh. The current to my water prison stops anyone from moving, pushing them in place. No one, not even the copywell ninja, can swim out of this. Go ahead, brat. Give it a try if you don't mind your body getting broken. Naruto casually strolls over to the water prison and jumps in, swimming against a strong current. The cocky persona Zabuza once had quickly fades as he witnesses the Genin, managing to swim like he's in a regular pool. He grabs Kakashi and swims out of it, helping Kakashi out. Shocked and enraged at Naruto's act, the Demon of the Mist grabs his blade and prepares to swing at him, until him and Kakashi have their fight like normal. 
Kakashi would tell his Genin that they have to do training for a week. Since Naruto knows tree walking, Sakura can do it perfectly, and Sasuke would learn it quickly through determination and rivalry, Kakashi gives them secondary training. Sasuke and Naruto can train together to improve and learn about each other, while Sakura can keep Tazuna and his family alright. Despite the rage Sasuke feels, he agrees to this, and Naruto and Sasuke train together, with both boys constantly giving it their all. They get into a jutsu clash yet again, how with Naruto's water ball it manages to beat the fireball and hit Sasuke back into a tree. Naruto walks over and asks Sasuke if he knows the water ball jutsu, which Sasuke of course says no to. Being the kind hearted guy he is, Naruto begins to teach Sasuke the jutsu, which he Uchiha would pick up easily, learning that Naruto isn't as bad as he thought. Still though, he needs to surpass him, but he can do it in a friendly way. Both Naruto and Sasuke would encounter Haku, and that interaction goes the same for the most part, but Sasuke thinking nothing of it. Sakura would begin to speak with Inari, and slowly starts to warm him up to Shinobi. It wouldn't be as much as Naruto did in canon, however due to Sakura's kind hearted nature, he'd learn that it's not as bad. The day everyone is going out to the bridge, Naruto hands Inari a shuriken to use in case of emergency before leaving. When Shinobi do attack Inari, throws it at the Shinobi watching it as it transforms into Naruto. Using his Totai Jutsu, he subdues him and ties him up. Over at the bridge, Zabuzu and Haku arrive, with Sasuke realising who the masked man is immediately. Haku discard his mask, seeing no need for it, getting Naruto to become confused, looking at his friend. He's not used to trickery, so he, this is, upsets him. Sasuke lunges at Haku, who uses Water Needle's Jutsu, trying to pierce Uchiha, with Naruto saving Sasuke. Haku uses his ice mirrors and surrounds Naruto and Sasuke, using his Senbon to pierce their bodies. No Jutsus or Taijutsus are working on Haku, as both Naruto and Sasuke remain beaten. Through deep breaths, Naruto gets an idea. It's one he doesn't verbally say, but he knows will work. He leaps over and grabs Sasuke by the shirt before slamming his bloody hand to the ground. The bridge begins to shake as everyone notices and quickly leaps backwards, watching in anticipation and fear as Naruto and Sasuke stand atop the massive Gamabunta. The Chief Toad sees Naruto damage and asks who did it, with Naruto pointing at Haku and Zabuza. Kakashi tells Sakura, Tazuna and the workers on the bridge to flee, knowing that something dangerous is about to happen, leaving Zabuza and Haku to stare in awe at the angry toads staring them down. Haku tries his crystal ice mirrors around Gamabunta, however the toad simply leaps out, shattering the mirrors, hitting Haku as he leaps, knocking them into the river. Zabuza tries to use a water dragon jutsu, however Gamabunta counters it with an air bullet, shooting a massive splash of Zabuza that sweeps him up and pushes him against the bridge. Going to finish things, Gamabunta leaps, trying to crush Zabuza, stepping on a water coil and causing the bridge to crack and begin to break apart. Zabuza and Haku both look at Gamabunta, trying to think of a way to beat the beast. No Senbon will pierce the toad's thick skin, plus it's unlikely they can get away. They come up with a quick strategy, with Zabuza using the water dragon jutsu yet again. As Gamabunta goes to knock the water away, Haku uses ice release to freeze the construct, making it shatter, piercing Gamabunta's flesh. Angered at the annoyance of the two brats, as well as how they beat up Naruto, Gamabunta is pretty bloodlusted right now. Knowing that Gamabunta has some light wounds makes Zabuza and Haku believe they can probably topple the beast if they try hard enough. That's when they hear crackles behind them. They turn to see Kakashi running at top speed with a lightning blade, which Haku takes with Zabuza, dying immediately. Zabuza left with nowhere to run, as Gamabunta rears his blade back and cuts Zabuza in half, killing him. Gamabunta places Sasuke and Naruto down before the summoning finishes, as Kakashi tends to their wounds. Kato and his men arrive and laugh at the upset Tabuza, that his bridge was destroyed. He stops laughing when he sees Kakashi leap at him and quickly assassinate him. Using Sharingan Genjutsu, he makes all of Gato's men see Gamabunta, making them flee so they don't cause any, any unnecessary damage. The bridge takes a bit longer to be built, however it is eventually finished and named the Chief Toad Bridge. Due to breaking the bridge, Gamabunta would offer the services himself and a couple other toads to help fix it. It makes Naruto happy that he gets to see his friends again, as they are essentially the only people he knew. Haku and Zabuza won't be buried since Naruto never talked no juice to them, so their bodies as well as Zabuza's blade falls into the ocean. In the gap between the land of waves and tuning exams, Naruto begins to learn the ways of people and how to properly communicate. He'd also do training during this time with Sasuke, making them both stronger, which then in turn has a domino effect, making Sakura stronger. Naruto keeps up on his meditation, however he knows not to try and absorb Senjutsu without Fukusaku there, to keep him from turning into a stone statue. To do his best to try and understand human culture, Naruto would go to the library with Sakura to research different cultures and different ninja villages so he doesn't feel so alienated, and so he has something to talk about with different people. 
It gives Sakura some insight on Naruto, and the duo would make something resembling a friendship during this time. Dry would visit Naruto monthly to check in on him to make sure he's managing to adapt to life in the Leaf. He does some training with Naruto to see his progression, impressed at his student's progress. Somehow Naruto has learned to use the water glow jutsu with shadow clone jutsu, which Jirai would be impressed at. One day, Team 7 will all be walking through the streets of the Leaf, where they see Kankuro picking on Konohamaru, Udon, and Moegi. Seeing the small kids upset, Naruto walks over, asking Kankuro to please them alone, which makes Kankuro laugh. In the typical bully fashion, Kankuro tells Naruto to make him, but before he can answer, Garo demands for his team to hurry up and leave, he's getting bored of this. Konohamaru questions Naruto as why he saved them, and the Toad Boy shrugs. They seemed upset, so he figured he'd help them. It makes Konohamaru inspired to become a hero just like Naruto, and him and his squad run off to go and save people just like the heroes that Naruto is. Team 7 go to the tuning exams, and after Lee challenges Sasuke like normal, the first test would arrive. Despite all the studying he did while reading books, he doesn't know how to do a test, or even what a pencil does. Believing it's food, he bites it only for it to taste bad and make him spit it out, getting everyone to shush him, and he's almost disqualified. The Hyuga girl next to him though simply giggles, thinking that Naruto is funny and a bit cute. I doubt Naruto would make an uproar like he did in canon, meaning more people would forfeit, however I think the core people, as well as a few extras, would stay in, it's just a lot less than it was. Team 7 travel into the Forest of Death, where Oboro tries to impersonate Naruto, getting Sasuke to scare him off. They'd come up with a code and keep moving, trying to stick together to make sure they don't get attacked. As they move, they're hit with a death genjutsu, as they disguise Orochimaru appears, wanting to take a young boy's body, nothing pedophilic there. But Sakura and Naruto struggle to break out, as Sasuke begins fighting Orochimaru as best as he can, struggling due to the sun and strength as well as the snake summons he's utilising. With her proficiency in Genjutsu, Sakura would end up managing to break herself out, and as well as Naruto look over to see Sasuke slowly being crushed by a snake. With Sasuke trapped, it gives Orochimaru the perfect opportunity to expand his neck and give him the curse mark, making Sasuke pass out in pain. Seeing his best friend on the ground in pain, struggling to even survive, triggers Naruto. He's not used to this kind of stuff. His eyes turn red as his face gets the whisker marks, he lets out a scream. His body begins to rise in strength to the interest of Orochimaru and to the fear of Sakura. With a monstrous bark, the one tails cloak grows over Naruto as he looks at Orochimaru screaming that he'll kill him. The snake summons both attack Naruto, who hits them with such powerful blows that they dispel almost immediately, intriguing Orochimaru even more. He begins to toy with the boy, seeing the capabilities of the nine tails Jinjuriki, amazed at his power. His cockiness is down swell as Naruto lands a powerful water bullet jutsu. Piercing through Orochimaru's chest, making him have to shed his skin unharmed. Getting bored of the rampage of the mid brat, Orochimaru uses the five pronged seal, making Naruto fall to the ground unconscious, leaving like he didn't can. The fight with Team Dosu goes the same, with Naruto being attacked afterwards. To make sure that they aren't attacked again, Naruto uses summoning jutsu to summon Gamma, the toad that Jiraiya usually uses. He asks them to help, which the toad agrees, telling them all to hop on. Once they all get on, the toad begins to bounce through the forest. They were attacked by Team Mobro, and now it's a gang idea. Using the hand sign to the wall bullet, ending with the Shadow Clone hand sign. Five Naruto's appear and let the shot up. Shadow Nero Bullet Jutsu, firing wall bullets with Shadow Clone inside that leap at Team Mobro, beating them up, knocking them out, giving Team 7 the opportunity to pass. The preliminaries to the third round arrive, the fights being Shikamaru vs. Zaku, Shino vs. Sasuke, Meiji vs. Yoroi, Dosu vs. Lee, Kiba vs. Naruto, Gara vs. Eno, Kankuro vs. Kin, Sakura vs. Tenten, Tamari vs. Choji, Hinata vs. Masume. Due to Shikamaru's brains, he's quickly beginning to analyze the tubes in Zaku's hand and determines how they blast sound. He then thinks up a plan before the fight has even begun. When it does begin, Shikamaru throws a kunai at Zaku, which he dodges, giving Shikamaru the chance to rush at him. Zaku charges up a blast to hit Shikamaru. When Raizu goes to release it, he's caught in a shadow possession and made to blast himself in the face, knocking him clean out, giving Shikamaru the win, as everyone sits there amazed at his brains. With not being able to use any of his jutsu due to the curse mark, Sasuke is heavily handicapped against his Abarame opponent. He also used Lee's Taijutsu against Shino, which doesn't work very well due to the beetles landing on his body, absorbing his chakra, making the curse mark appear over his body, paralyzing him. The dark chakra makes all the beetles die, Shino's hive goes wild, and the sheer malice is emitting. For Sasuke is disqualified for his curse mark, Shino forfeits, giving Sasuke a win on a technicality. 
Neji vs Roy would be very easy for the Hyuga, since he can use the Byakugan to see where your Roy is, and dodge his Chakra, getting absorbed before hitting him to the ground with a gentle fist giving him the win. Due to his previous fight with Dosu, Lee knows the whole gimmick with the sound that his opponent uses. He has to finish this quickly, removing his wits and rushing at Dosu. Before Dosu can use his weapon, Lee beats Dosu down, knocking him out with a chop to the back of the neck. Kiba is extremely cocky when seeing Naruto and since he's stronger than his canonical counterpart. When the fight begins, Kiba uses his Shadow Clone Jutsu to make a single clone of himself, ask if Naruto wants to fight someone who can pull off such a high ranking Jutsu. Oh cool, I can do that too! Naruto uses his Shadow Clone Jutsu to make over 10 of himself, which makes Kiba gulp. He makes Akamaru use the human mimicry as he and his clone use the beast mimicry, launch themselves out of Naruto's clones who all begin hopping over him laughing, it's just like being back on Miyaboku, playing Leapfrog with Gamakichi. Utilising the transformation jutsu, every clone on Naruto transforms into Kiba, all letting a shout of Dirty Dog Mimicry. All the clones begin rushing in between the three Kibas, which makes the real Kiba grin. He needs to sniff to see which is actually his clone and which is Akamaru, so they can take down the Naruto's, but they all smell the same. While jumping over the attacks, the sense must have rubbed off on them, making them smell just like Kiba. A massive battle royale between everyone goes with Naruto clones doing quite well against Kiba. Every clone on the battlefield ended up dispersing, leaving a chuckling Naruto staring at Kiba and Akamaru. Both Kiba and Akamaru use the fang of a fang, with Naruto using a shadow narrow bullet jutsu to counter it, making Kiba and his dog fall to the ground out of breath. Hayate would then call the match in Naruto's favour, since he's been overpowering Kiba from the start, and it looks like the Inazuka can barely move, making Naruto giggle and Kiba grits teeth a bit angry. The moment she enters the arena, Ino throws a kunai at Gara, which simply blocks with his sand. It leaves him open for Ino to use the mind possession, going into Gara's mind. When entering, she comes face to face with Shukaku, and begins to scream in fear. She releases a jutsu and forfeits immediately, afraid out of her mind of what she just saw, as she loops behind Asuma for protection. Kin can literally do nothing to Kankuro, throwing kunai after kunai into his puppets, proving to be futile. Kankuro slashes her a poison spike, causing her to pass out fairly quickly. Against Tenten, Sakura is kinda screwed. Tenten's weapons are just too dangerous and too powerful for Sakura to handle. She'd be beaten swiftly, allowing Tenten to go into the finals. When entering the arena, Choji uses his human ball to jutsu. Rushing at Tamari, he uses a fan to push Choji backwards, slowing his momentum, making him stop before he touches her with cuts all over his body. He deflates, dazed, unable to continue fighting, allowing Tamari to take the win. Hinata easily overpowers Masume, shutting down his chakra points, stopping him, constricting her. The fight was short, but yet sweet, as it allows Hinata to go to the finals. The finals roster is randomly chosen, which would be Tenten vs Kankuro, Shikamaru vs Tamari, Lee vs Sasuke, Naruto vs Neji, Hinata vs Gaara. Guy would train with Lee, increasing his skills in Taijutsu, as well as his speed. It means that the gap between him and Sasuke is still quite vast without factoring in ninjutsu or genjutsu. Tenten and Neji were trained together doing some minor buffs to them. It increased Neji's perception time and reflexes and increases Tenten's accuracy for their respective fights. Inata would go to train, however Ino stops her. She tells her not to fight Gara, explaining what she saw when going into his mind. Yuhugo agrees not to fight and so she doesn't really train during the small time skip. During the one month's time skip, Gara would find Ino and Shikamaru in Choji's hospital room, where he goes to kill the Yamanaka girl since he didn't get to during their fight. Shikamaru catches him in a shadow possession, stopping him as Ino screams for help. Asuma arrives, telling Gara to leave, which Jinchuriki does begrudgingly, his bloodlust simply growing after this. Naruto would meet up with Jiraiya, where they both reverse summon back to Mount Miyaboku. Seeing his family after so long, he runs over to hug Fukusaku and Shima, and high fives Kichi and Gamatatsu. He asked Fukasaku if he plans on training him, or is this just a leisure trip, which the Toad would confirm. It's time for Naruto to learn the Sacred Toad technique. It's time for Naruto to learn Sage Mode. For about 18 hours a day, Naruto would simply meditate, trying his best to take in natural energy, barely getting any time to eat, sleep, and see his family. Shima asks her husband if he believes he's overworking Naruto, but Fukasaku shakes his head. He isn't. Naruto should start to determine that he's doing that for so long, Fukasaku is simply helping to make sure that boy doesn't die. Around three weeks into their training, Naruto had finally mastered Sage Mode, making his entire family proud. Fukasaku had reversed summon Jiraiya to see Naruto's newfound power, with the third Sage quite impressed and a bit embarrassed that he can't even do that. The remaining week is left for Naruto to mainly relax and see the Toads, as well as come up with strategies to fight. 
Dry arrives to take Naruto back, who promises to win, returning back to the Hidden Leaf Village. Tuning exams arrive with the first fight being Konkuro vs Tenten. With his two puppets, Konkuro is able to place Tenten on the defensive since she's struggling to keep up with the close range attacks. She tries throwing weapons at Konkuro himself, however he either makes his puppets take the blows or he simply evades them. As she keeps moving, Tenten thinks of a strategy, rushing at one of Konkuro's puppets. It sprouts a spike from its mouth, slashing her arm which she ignores to execute her plan. She slams an explosive note on it, before leaping backwards, dodging the explosion, making the puppet go up in flames. Once getting her distance, she spot Kankuro call back his other puppet to its scroll, as he stands there with his arms crossed, a smug look over his face. She's currently poisoned, she won't remain conscious much longer. Ten Ten tries to call upon all of her strength, grabbing some ninja weapons, but drops them as she passes out due to the poison. The next fight between Shikamaru and Tamari goes the same for the most part, with Shikamaru forfeiting due to a lack of chakra. The next fight is Rock Lee vs Sasuke, with Sasuke and Kakashi barely arriving on time for the fight to take place. Sasuke is smart, he knows Lee is quick and strong, so he activates his Sharingan to analyse his opponent's movements. He can keep up with weightless Lee somewhat, learning his moves, getting stronger as their fight goes on. Lee would activate the first gate, which shocks everyone since Lee never demonstrated the technique in this timeline. He gives Sasuke a bit more trouble, however the Uchiha is managing to hang in there. When Lee goes into the fourth gate, Sasuke is completely dominated by Lee, putting the beat down on him. Even with the Sharingan, it's hard to see Lee as nothing more than a blur to him, and he's beaten up quite harshly. In an out of character move, Sasuke begins to run away from Lee, running along the wall, with his hand scraping against it. Lee rushes at Sasuke, he uses stuff like substitution jutsus and traps to keep Lee at bay, as he slowly makes his flesh crackle. When Lee catches up to Sasuke, the Uchiha turns around, landing the Jujori onto Lee's shoulder, piercing it, doing some damage, making Lee fall to the ground. Sasuke barely wins with his curse mark being hard to keep at bay, due to all the heavy chakra exhaustion he's feeling. Naruto enters the arena against Neji when Neji would begin spouting about fate. It makes Naruto simply ignore Neji as he tells him about the fate of those who used to use Sage Mode was to become a stone toad. In Naruto's apartment, one of the three clones meditating would poof away, sensing that Naruto needs Sage Chakra. Naruto's face gets the typical marks, as he looks at Neji, telling him that fate is a lie. Naruto rushes at Neji, proving how much of an amp Sage Mode is. He's moving faster than the Byakugan or even the Sharingan can see, except for maybe Jonin and high-ranking ninjas. Neji tries using his rotation to stop Naruto, but by the time he places it up, he sees Naruto inside the rotation with him, who says that it looks like being underwater. Neji hits Naruto into the rotation, who bounces off and hits Neji hard in the nose, breaking it. In the last ditch effort, Neji throws a bunch of smoke bombs down, using the Byakugan to see through, hoping it will give him an advantage, not knowing about the sensory capabilities that Sage Mode grants. When the smoke clears, Naruto stands over Neji's body as Sage Mode runs out, and he chuckles that he went a little bit overboard. Everyone is in shock at Naruto's power, especially Sasuke. When Naruto comes back to a stand, he'd get a brief rundown on the technique, which piques Sasuke's interest. He's about to ask how to access such a technique, before being called into the arena. Sasuke is placed in the arena against both Kankuro and Tamari, with him being at a great disadvantage. He's forced to dodge a fan slash from Tamari, and begins to fight with Kankuro's puppet, trying his best to avoid both of them attacking. He realises that Tamari is using wind release, and thinks he can take advantage of that. He needs to keep his chakra at bay, however, so his curse mark doesn't come out and paralyse him, so he needs to plan the right time to use a fireball jutsu. He uses the speed and taijutsu prowess he recently learned from Lee, and begins to do his best to beat down Konkuro's puppet, without Sharingan, having to use his own knowledge of combat to dodge the numerous weapons and tricks that the puppet holds. As he fights, he strategically knocks it closer and closer to Tamari. He stands on top of the puppet, beginning to crush it, with Tamari using a fan to slash at Sasuke. Simultaneously, Sasuke uses the fireball jutsu and the substitution jutsu, getting out of the way of the massive inferno that sweeps up both Konkuro's puppet and Tamari. When the smoke clears, a badly damaged Tamari lays in the broken pieces of Konkuro's puppet. Konkuro grabs a kunai ready to fight Sasuke off, before getting gut punched by the heavily fatigued Uchiha, making him collapse giving Sasuke the win. Naruto enters the arena against the bloodlusted Gara, who is much more desperate to kill since he hasn't had a fight the whole tuning exams. Immediately, Gara surrounds Naruto and San, ready to crush him, but Naruto breaks out again in Sage Mode. Knowing that Naruto is strong in that form, as well as the added bloodlust, Gara surrounds himself with San, beginning to transform. Naruto is a bit confused before sensing the horrific, dark chakra that is the One Tails. 
He begins to punch a sandum, chucking it around the air, leaving big dents in it that quickly regenerate. Using a powerful punch, Naruto dents through the sand and grabs Gara, throwing him out in a partially transformed state. As everyone becomes confused, the invasion truly begins with the Genjutsu knocking out those who were unprepared. Naruto and Gara continue fighting, with Naruto using his strength to pick up Gara and throw him out of the village, realising that he's a Jinchuriki just like him. He drifts off with his sage mode fading, making him use the final clone as he arrives at Gara's location. Kiba, Sakura, Shikamaru and Sasuke all begin to pursue the Toad Boy and Sand Beast. They'd run into the Sound Ninja with Shikamaru telling them that he'll play the sacrificial role. Kiba would refuse his notion, as would Sasuke, and they'd all prepare a trap which would occur flawlessly, killing all the Sound Ninja as Asuma arrives applauding their work. Together the five all continue moving to save Naruto and stop Gara. Naruto begins dominating Gara as he begins to slowly transform. To take Gara down, Naruto tries to knock him out with a gut punch that proves futile as his body falls out of sage mode at the worst possible time. With a sinister grin, Gara tries to clasp his claws around Naruto, where a bunch of insects rush in and carry him away. Due to the damage Sasuke has caused to Tenmari and Kankuro, they be with the medical corps, leaving Gara alone and Shino the opportunity to follow without having to fight anyone. He brings Naruto backwards, who thanks Shino, not really knowing who he is, but knowing that he's seemingly a good guy and he's from the Leaf. Shino tells Naruto that he'll give him the opportunity, using beetle clones to distract Gara. The half Tanuki would easily shuffle up the beetles and get some light wounds on the Aburami member before a bunch of shadow clones rush in, saving Shino and carry him away. Not long after the clones begin fighting Gara, a group of Leaf Shinobi arrive. Seeing Shino's wounds, Asuma orders Sakura to take him back to the medical corps, which she nods at rushing off. Asuma tells everyone else to go with her, with Shikamaru being the only one who wants to, but Kiba forces him to stay in a comedic moment. With the clones holding him off, it gives them all a chance to come up with a strategy. A strategy that quickly flies out the window, as Gara turns home to Shikaku and begins to destroy every single clone, laughing maniacally. Naruto gets an idea, telling everyone to get behind him. He uses a summoning jutsu, summoning Gamma Boonsan to the battlefield. Everyone leaps on as Naruto tells his chief the situation, asking him for his help, which he'd agree to. As Gamabunta fights, Shikamaru identifies that he has to wake up Gara, which would break him out of the transformed state. He asks if anyone has any long range jutsu that could either hit Gara or transport one of them over to hit Gara. At this, Naruto gets a cheeky grin over his face. He uses his shadow narrow bullet firing a water bullet at Gara. Naruto's accuracy is off, however, since he's never fired one so far, and it merely hits Shukaku's eye, making the clone land next to his eye placing an awkward smile on his face as he stares at the beast before poofing away out of fear in a very comedic moment, I think we can all imagine it. Sasuke tells Naruto that he's such a bad shot and that he always has been. In a parallel to canon, Naruto agrees asking Sasuke if he can shoot him, which Uchiha agrees. His chakra is quite low, so they only get one shot. Naruto rushes off of Gamma Bunta with Sasuke hitting him with a water bullet, firing him towards Shukaku. During the shot, the curse mark appears over Sasuke, making his body crumble, making the shot uh, be a bit off, which everyone sees. As Naruto falls, he screams for his life until he hears a noise. A fang over fang rushes from underneath, but it's different. It had a blue aura around it. Asuma infuses wind chakra into the fang over fang, allowing it to be quicker and stronger. It hits Naruto upwards into the air enough to get on top of Shukaku. He lands a punch on Gaara, making him wake up as the two boys fall to the ground. Naruto would give Gaara a different worded variant of his Totono Jutsu, however it does the same thing. It makes Gaara apologise as he leaves, heading back to Sunagakure alone, deep in thought. He gets scolded by Konkuro and Tamari for leaving him behind, but when he sees him, oddly, Gaara apologises, and it ultimately makes their relationship much better. When returning to the leaf, it won't take long for Kiba to ask Naruto to teach him how to use Sage Mode. Sasuke would also want to learn the transformation, since it will be useful for his crusade against his brother. Naruto would tell them it's very dangerous, but neither would care and begin to meditate and try and get Senjutsu. Using Shadow Clones, Naruto would monitor their progress, making sure they don't become stone. Kibo would be a bit worried to become a statue, so he'd always take in too little energy and never go into the form. Sasuke would try to take in natural energy, but would be seemingly doing it correctly. But every time he does so, the curse man will react and grow over his body, harming him. It makes Sasuke feel inadequate, and he becomes resentful of Naruto for the massive gap between their power. During one of their meditation sessions, Jirai approaches Naruto about taking him out of the village to find a new Hokage, which Naruto would agree to. He tells Sasuke and Kiba not to practice sage mode until he gets back, and would leave with his sensei. 
Due to the mastery Sage Mode Naruto has, Jiraiya would ask him to use the form and sense out a chakra that surround the strength of Jiraiya, which Naruto nods at. He enters the form and begins to sense someone who fits Jiraiya's description. He senses two of them. One of them feels very dark, and the other one feels very drunk. Dry chuckles at this, telling him that that's Tsunade, and the duo leave to find her. They find her much quicker due to not needing to track her. Dry will begin to speak with Tsunade as Naruto zones out, not paying attention to the grown-ups talking. Instead, he spots something that catches his eye. A fly enters the room and begins to buzz around, which makes Naruto hungry. He begins to slime on the walls and ceilings, trying to catch it, making Tsunade facepalm and Dry chuckle. As he chases it, it goes outside the door, which Naruto would follow. He'd go outside to see it crushed on the ground confused. He turns around to see Kisame and Itachi there. He doesn't feel any fear and asks if they want the fly. Kisame snickers as he grabs Same harder and tells his partner there will be a bummer to kill this one. Hearing this makes Naruto's blood run cold as he realizes that he's in danger. Before he can use Shadow Kong to defend himself, everyone hears a noise as Sasuke appears at the bottom of the street with bloodlust radiating off of him. He rushes at Itachi who catches his hand to stop him. When Itachi catches his brother's hand, he expects Sasuke to attack him before realizing that it was a diversion. Turning around, he sees a fang of a fang rushing in, making Itachi explode into crows to dodge it as Sasuke leaves backwards and Kiba and Akamaru land. Before any more fighting can occur, Jirai and Sanade stand there, telling Kisame and Itachi to leave. Kisame would be more worried seeing two sound in and would tell Itachi that they have to leave immediately. Itachi would second this notion and the duo leave. Sasuke becomes angered that his brother fled and questions why Itachi attacked Naruto, which he'd shrug at. Mike Guy arrives to take Kiba and Sasuke back to the leaf. However, both boys want to stay, which Naruto had second. Jiraiya tells Guy it's fine for them to stay, which he nods out leaving. Kiba would naively ask who the woman is, which Naruto exclaims that she's the fifth Okage, which Tsunade scoffs at, rejecting the notion. Naruto asks her to do it, it'll be really cool, which she responds to, asking why Naruto doesn't become Hokage then. With his blank stare, Naruto smiles that like he's too young, which annoys Tsunade. She tells Naruto that he's so annoying for him to stop talking, which Naruto ignores, beginning to talk a lot. Angry, she tells Naruto that she's going to give him a minute head start before she kicks his ass. Instead of fleeing, Naruto simply sits on the floor, which confuses Tsunade she believes he's simply giving in to his fate. By the time a minute has passed, Naruto's face alters with pigmentation around his eyes and toe pupils, and he stands up asking Tsunade if she's going to attack first. She's hesitant, not knowing what just happened, but would be curious nonetheless, telling Naruto that he may go first. He rushes at Tsunade with such speed and an unpredictable fighting style, which gets her interested. She still had the advantage over him and would eventually stop in midair. She learns that this is Sage Mode and is impressed at the boy's skills. She'd then make a bet with Naruto that if he can learn something on par with Sage Mode and perfect it in a week, then she'll give in and become Hokage which he agrees to. The next day, Dry would begin to train Naruto with Kira and Sasuke tagging along to hopefully do some training with the Sanin as well. Dry would begin giving Naruto the Rasengan training and begin brainstorming on what to teach the other two. He'd end up teaching Kiba the Wild Lion's Mane, which Kiba would begin to train with his Shadow Clone. Due to the abundance of hair that Kiba grows, the Inazuka would begin to brainstorm some Jutsu they can use in tandem with Akamaru. As for Sasuke, he'd teach Uchiha the Fire Dragon Flame Bullet, she picks up with each due to the Uchiha cotton having a natural affinity for fire release. Sasuke would ask Jiraiya about the curse mark and brings up how it acts up when he tries to take in Senjutsu, which Jiraiya theorizes that it must have Senjutsu within it. It's just a theory that I'll have to look into though. Like canon, Tsunade would drug Jiraiya and leaves where she begins fighting Orochimaru and the gang will find her. Seeing Kabuto being a spy makes Naruto feel so betrayed and angry, so much so that his face flares as QB Chakra begins to pour into him. With a sinister grin over his face, Orochimaru asks Sasuke how his curse mark is working for him, which angers Sasuke. Jiraiya tells him to calm down though, and the Uchiha backs off. Due to the drug, Jiraiya would ask Naruto to summon Chief Toad, which the boy would. The pervy sage leaps on top of Garmin Bunta, as he and Orochimaru's summons begin battle. With Tsunade paralyzed due to Kabuto's blood, and Shizune getting manhandled, it leads the three Genin boys to fight off Kabuto. Knowing of Orochimaru's main goal, Kabuto would begin to test Sasuke, Merely seeing Kiba and Naruto's weaklings he shouldn't care about. Kabuto would overpower Sasuke, asking him how he could let himself get so weak. Sasuke simply ignores this and tries to land a Chidori on Kabuto, which he, the medical nin dodges. The Uchiha crumbles to the, the ground as the curse mark grows over his body. 
with a smug grin. Kabuto tells Sasuke that he's so weak, he can't even control Orochimaru's gift. At this, Naruto shouts for Kabuto to shut up as he rockets in and manages to Sengon, hitting Kabuto as hard as he can, making him crumble to the ground. Tsunade would heal Sasuke a bit, using a medical juice to stop the curse mark spreading, making him able to move, however he remains quiet, almost like he's in thought. Seeing the strength Naruto demonstrated, Orochimaru extends his neck, going to stab the boy, with Tsunade saving him like cannon. But for Orochimaru and Tsunade, some of their typical summons, as the three Genin boys leap on top of Gamabunta. As the summons battle like cannon, Orochimaru would begin to antagonize directly to Sasuke. He asks him if he's ready to join him and become stronger, or is he going to remain with a leaf and be a weakling like Naruto and Kiba? His face grins in anticipation, as he can see the uncertainty in the boy. The fight ends as normal, however one key event changes. Before Orochimaru and Kabuto leave, Sasuke walks over to them and demands to come along. Everyone is stunned hearing this, except for Orochimaru and Kabuto, who will leave with Sasuke quicker than anyone can react. Naruto begins to weep in rage and angry, not knowing how to feel, not fully processing it. His body sprouts a one-tailed cloak, but due to all the stress and shock, he passes out. He doesn't really understand it, he's still like a baby. Everyone returns to leave, with Tsunade taking the mantle of the fifth Hokage. Naruto would have to tell all his friends what happened, making Sakura begin to weep uncontrollably, making Naruto promise to bring Sasuke back, which he agrees to. Hearing how his student left, and how he was helpless to do anything to save him, makes Kakashi plunge into a depression. It makes him motivated to train to become stronger, so he can make up for his wrongs and stop losing his teammates. Naruto would do some training with Kiba for the majority of the time left in the village. During one of these training trips, Jiraiya appears and tells Naruto something interesting. According to his spy network, Orochimaru is yet to take Sasuke's body, even though he could have, which is yet to be determined as to why. He tells Naruto that they are leaving, which he nods out, saying goodbye to his friends, as he and the Toad Sage return to Naruto's home on Miyaboku. For two and a half years, Naruto would be training non-stop on Miyaboku. Feeling broken and upset about losing Sasuke would still be his motivation to become stronger. Due to how many times he's been betrayed, Naruto would read books that Jiraiya gives him about being a ninja so he can learn better tactics and overall just be a better shinobi. Due to seeing Naruto getting so pumped up about his training, it would rub off on some of the other toads. Gamakichi would constantly spar with his brother, making them both stronger in the process. I could see Naruto essentially making Gamakichi his personal summon, even though he isn't as big or strong as Bunta, but Naruto still believes in him. The blonde would have nightmares about how he let Sasuke go. He beat himself up much more about it since he never got the chance to even stop him. It leads to Naruto constantly growing the QB cloak in his dream, and thrashing about destroying the home he lives in numerous times. Fukasaku would tell Jiraiya about this fact, and Jiraiya began to brainstorm a way to fix things. After some thinking, Jiraiya thinks of a couple methods. If Naruto comes to peace of it, it may lead to him stopping in the future, so seeing Gamamaru would be a good idea. Alternatively, Fukaku could do some training in seals to be able to apprehend him in the future if this ever happens. Naruto goes to see the fortune teller Toad and asks a simple question, will he be able to bring Sasuke back? The Toad begins to see into the future and tells Naruto he'll look into it, telling him not to fret. After a while, the Toad will tell Naruto that the future is unclear. It's possible to save him before his heart is plunged completely into darkness. It's also possible that Sasuke will be too far gone for him. Meanwhile, Fukasaku would be given the scroll of sealing, and begin to learn S-rank seals whenever Naruto is busy. It means that whenever Naruto does have his night terrors, Fukasaku is able to apprehend him, and stop having to rebuild his home. Though these night terrors would become much less frequent, since Naruto is somewhat at peace, though not fully. Naruto would get some high-class training from Fukasaku and Jiraiya. He learns to make an Odama Rasengan, and would begin training to perfect the Rasengan. As he already has the water chakra down, he learned to use that, making a water release Rasengan that he would call the Rasengama. Naruto then learned to use Wind Chakra, and would create his Rasen Shuriken, since he'd need a powerful range attack. He'd also learn to use Fire Release, and would create a Fire Release Rasengan, called the Rasen Hia. With these mastered variants of his Rasengan, Naruto feels confident in taking on the world. Seeing how Naruto's mastered Sage Mode inspires Jiraiya, he'd be training and would learn how to use the perfected Sage Mode, which proves to be a decent buff overall. Over in the leaf, a couple key differences would occur. Kiba would be motivated to become stronger, wanting to beat up Sasuke with his bare hands. He and Sasuke were just starting to have some sort of friendship, and then he just ups and leaves. Kiba won't have that. He'd be trying to learn Sage Mode, but due to his cowardice, he'd constantly struggle to take in Senjutsu, since he doesn't want to become a stone statue. 
Keyboard learned the imperfect stage mode, which makes him look even more uglier than he originally was. To help you out with Master, Akamaru would begin to learn how to take in Sage Chakra and transmit it to Kiba, similar to what Jiraiya does with Fukasaku and Shima. Kiba would also learn how to use three Shadow Clones, which helps him get a lot stronger quicker. He also learns to use the Transformation Jutsu with all wild lines made to make himself look like Akamaru, which would be useful in sneaking around. Due to Kiba getting stronger and training hard, it'd make Hinata and Chino stronger as well. Hinata would be Kiba's primary training partner, with her and Kiba becoming closer than ever. She's inspired to get stronger, seeing how determined he is, and promises him that she'll help bring Sasuke back. Over with Kakashi, he'd be training hard like never before. I could see him training with Sakura whenever she isn't training with Tsunade, making the duo much stronger and closer than normal. She'd benefit more from it than Kakashi does, however. It does help him nonetheless. He begins to teach Sakura Genjutsu and helps her learn strategies to use a Genjutsu in collaboration with her strength to truly land haymakers on people. It makes it even more useful than Shorty was, which will please everyone. As for Sasuke's training, that's going to remain private for now as it will ruin the big surprise. Something to mention though is that the Sound 4 are all alive and will be training with Sasuke getting stronger in the process. After about two and a half years, Jiraiya would meet with Fukusaku and Shima while Naruto is busy. He tells them about the Akatsuki and that they shouldn't let Naruto leave Miyaboku for a while, not until the threat has passed and they can be sure everything is safe. They would agree with this notion and hold a meeting of all the other toads to make sure that they make sure that Naruto doesn't escape. Not long after this moment, Naruto would be training with Gamakichi where the toad would be putting Naruto on the defensive. Using a shadow clone, Naruto would gather Senjutsu and enter Sage Mode right as the toad flies straight at him. Normally, Naruto would be able to dodge or counter this attack, but something catches his attention. He senses a battle far away. It feels like Gara against someone strong. Before I can dwell on it though, Fukusaku arrives and asks Naruto to grab the, the appropriate bugs for tonight's feast, which Naruto agrees to, falling out of Sage Mode, completely forgetting what just occurred since he is a bit naive. Later that night, while Naruto is asleep, he feels a tongue slap him in the face and wakes up to see it retract out of his window. He knows who it is, but he doesn't know why he's there at that time of night. Naruto would climb out his window asking Gamakichi what's up. Being Naruto's brother, Gamakichi isn't able to keep up the lie that everyone wants him to. He tells Naruto about the Ikatsuki threat, which annoys Naruto. He wants to fight and stop these bad things from happening, that's probably what's happening to Gaara. He might be dead, they have to go help him. He goes to leave, but Gamakichi tells him he can't. His name's on the toad contract, he'll get reverse summoned right back, and be put in a ceiling jutsu. Naruto would find the scroll and uses a kunai to destroy where his name was, pulling out a blank scroll so that he can summon Gamakichi. Naruto begins to leave with Kichi by his side. As they leave in a slowly turns to day, Fukusaku realizes what has occurred. He rushes away, shouting for all the other toads to stop him. As Naruto and Kichi begin to get away, Bunsa, Ken, and Hora all appear, telling Naruto to stop. Instead of backing down, Naruto uses a Shadow Coin to create hundreds of replicas of himself. They all create different variants of the Rasengan and begin to use them on the toads, doing their best to hold them off. Being the strongest, Gamma Bunsa begins to rampage, destroying every clone in the way. He looks down, and doesn't see any Naruto left, nor does he see his son. Both of them have made a run for it. He turns around to see a bunch of Naruto's running, with a bunch of Kichis, and doesn't know how to stop them. The real Naruto and Kichi get quite far, as they know how to get out the mountains, as well as due to the strength and speed they possess, they get down in less than a day. Before they can truly escape, Naruto realizes something is off. He dodges a punch, and turns around to see Sage Mode Jiraiya, with Fukasaku and Shima on his shoulders. Fukasaku tells Naruto that he's sorry, but Naruto barks that he's not a kid, he can take care of himself. What's the point in all of his training if he can't even utilize it? It isn't like he can come up with a plan. All, after that moment, all the clans that he had originally made to go from Bunta would disperse and then send Jutsu into the main body as he stands there ready to fight off the, all the Toad people. He attacks Jiraiya, proving his strength. He overpowers him with Jiraiya only beating Naruto due to his brain power. Naruto charges up a Rasengan and becomes red, as he lets out a shout of Rasen here, throwing a flaming ball at Jiraiya, who barely jumps over. The ball explodes, hitting Jiraiya, damaging him quite a bit. Naruto creates a Rasengan that fills it with water chakra, creating his Rasengama. He throws it as he holds onto a water chain, connected to the ball, using it like a ball and chain, to swing at Jiraiya, getting a couple shots in. To finish things, Naruto creates a Rasen Shuriken, telling Jiraiya he's sorry. He launches it at him, putting Jiraiya out of commission, as Fukusaku and Shima poof back to Miyaboku. Naruto had ran on top of Gamakichi, arriving at Sunagakure quite quickly. As he's on the way, he bumps into Kakashi, Sakura, and Tamari, 
would shout out to them, shocking them at Naruto's appearance. He learns of what happened in the sand, and him and his brother would accompany them, where they obtain Chio and keep moving. After a short scuffle with Itachi, they bump into Data and Sorcery, where Naruto, Kichi, and Kakashi begin to ex pursue the explosion expert. With his anger flowing, Naruto tells Kichi to leap in the air, which Ito does, giving Naruto the height he needs to leap at Daedara, stabbing him in the back of his blade, making Daedara throw a bomb at the blonde, annoyed, dropping Gaara's body in the process. As Naruto goes to check on Gaara's body, the events of the Kazakage rescue art plays out normally, with Chiyo sacrificing herself to, you know, bring Gaara back. When returning to the leaf, Tsunade stood at the gate, awaiting their arrival, with Fukusaku and Chima on her shoulders. The moment he sees them, Naruto panics, shouting to Kichi that they have to run! Fukusaku places them under sound genjutsu, making them both pass out as they're taken to the Hokage office. Once awakening, Naruto is greeted by his parents alongside Tsunade and a bandaged Jiraiya, all looking at him and his toad brother with disapproval. Being the first to speak, Fukusaku walks over to Naruto and hits him over the head with a stick, asking what the hell Naruto thinks he's doing. Kichi tries to defend Naruto, but gets hit over the head as well, being told to be quiet. Rubbing the newly formed bump on his head, Naruto tries to defend the action that he's taken. He isn't a little kid anymore, he doesn't need everyone to fight off his battles. His strength has surpassed Dryer. He mastered the Rasengan three separate times, and mastered Sage Mode within three weeks, back in the tuning exams. They need to stop babying him and let him be his own man. It takes everyone aback a bit. Naruto's never spoken with such logic before, usually being quite aloof, dumb boy he typically was. He actually made sense of once, which was quite shocking. Nevertheless, Fukisaku is adamant that Naruto has, should return to Mount Miyaboku, as should Tsushima. He tells Naruto to re-sign the Toad summoning contract, and then they'll all go home, where he and Gamakichi can pay for what they've done. With a heavy heart, Naruto listens to his father, signing the scroll, prepared to turn home. Before Fukisaku can reverse summon them all, Jiraiya would stop him. He tells the old Toad that Naruto, for once, is right. He's his own man, and if he wants to fight, he should be allowed to fight. If Fukusaku stopped looking through his parent goggles for a second, he'd realize that Naruto has become a capable shinobi. Fukusaku admits that he's being stupid, apologizing to Naruto for trying to control him. If he's prepared to take the hits, then he should be allowed to. Naruto runs over and hugs both Fukusaku and Shima, and they brace for a couple moments before Fukusaku takes Shima and Kichi home. Naruto leaves the Hokage office to go and find something to do. While he walks through the streets, he sees a white dog roaming the streets, and remembers it as Akamaru. He rushes over, seeing a load of dogs stroking it, before it poofs, turning into Kiba, leaving both boys looking at each other quite awkwardly. Kiba barks at Naruto Blue's cover, as Hinata, Shino, and Akamaru all quickly arrive on the scene, catching Kiba, winning the game of hide and seek they had going on. Naruto says hello to them, asking how they've been, with Kiba saying they should all get something to eat and catch up. Teammate and Naruto would walk through the streets to find a good place to eat, running into Sakura and Team 10 along the way. Together, everyone goes to a nearby place to eat. A small stand called Ichiraku Ramen? Sat at the counter, Naruto confesses that nothing will beat Mars cooking, before trying some ramen and nearly crying from happiness, tasting sheer perfection, eating the bowl in seconds, giving everyone else a chuckle. Back at the Hokage estate, Tsunade began to heal Jiraiya's runes from his previous brawl with Naruto. She was shocked that Jiraiya managed to make it out of the fight as unscathed as he did, commenting on the molecular damage caused by Naruto's attacks. In short, Tsunade asks Jiraiya if he calls all this from using Sage Mode, which Jiraiya would confirm, amazing her. Curious, she asks Jiraiya the ability Sage Mode grants, which he'd give a brief rundown about. She has to admit, she regrets not signing the contract with the Toads if it meant she could learn this power. Later that day, Naruto and Sakura would go to the Hokage office, where they meet up with Yamato. Naruto would quickly befriend Yamato due to them both acting weirdly, which makes Sakura sweat drop that she wants Sasuke back now more than ever. Naruto won't be as agitated towards Sai, instead questioning about his backstory, like where he comes from, who his parents are, stuff like that, which Sai would answer with short, blunt answers. Both boys would be walking and talking so slowly that Yamato and Sakura get a fair bit ahead of them, leaving them behind. Sai would question Naruto about why he's so curious as to who Sai is, and Naruto simply shrugs. He just likes to learn about things about his friends. He just say Sai a bit, hearing what Naruto had said. He clears up what he believes is Naruto's mistake, telling him that they aren't friends, but mere teammates, which upsets Naruto a bit. Heh, <laughs> that's what Sasuke was like when I met him. It doesn't matter to me if you don't like me, but in my mind, we're friends. Sai tries to deny this, rushing away, but begins to warm up to Naruto. They arrive at the Tenchi Bridge, where Yamato tells his team to hide, as he disguises himself as Sasori, and walks onto the bridge. 
While Yamato speaks, Naruto sits on the ground and begins to meditate, confusing Sai as he questions Naruto's actions, to which Sakura explains about stage mode. As he goes into stage mode, he senses something sinister not far away, opening Nai's shock as he breathes heavily. At that moment, Orochimaru would act and Yamato is revealed, making Team 7 launch in to save him. Orochimaru begins to antagonize Naruto, talking about how Sasuke, however Naruto doesn't call upon his Kyuubi chakra. He had the future told, and he's pretty confident he'll save his Uchiha friend eventually. Sage mode Naruto and Orochimaru begin to battle, Naruto doing much better than his Force Tales self had. For Orochimaru unable to use seals, he is essentially helpless against Naruto. He uses Rasen Shuriken, Rasen Hia, and Rasen Gama to break Orochimaru's torso and arms off. He'd shed his skin, and he, Kabuto, and Sai all get away. Naruto tells Yamato and Sakura that they need to hurry. What he sensed was not Orochimaru, it was more sinister and dark. It felt similar to Sasuke, but at the same time, it was completely different. Now with them both worried, everyone rushed away, ready for combat. Sai would be roaming Orochimaru's hideout, doing his best to avoid the sound fall catching him, as he moves to find and execute Sasuke. When opening the door, he sees it in darkness as a big monster flaring two red eyes shrinks into a humanoid form, as a lightning sword stabs Sai on the shoulder and he explodes in base. Naruto, Yamato, and Sakura all arrive to see Sasuke stood with the sound fort all behind him, and he looks down at them. Sakura begins to heal Sai as Naruto asks Sasuke what he flow. He knows it was him, he might as well just spill it. The cow out of the back, Sasuke tells Naruto he'll regret it. Sasuke's body begins to morph in a grotesque, unnatural way, leaving Team 7 afraid and the sound fort grinning. The Uchiha's flesh begins growing very pale as his eyes become black, leaving a Sharingan. His horns grow out of his head as a snake sprouts up his gut like a backwards tail. Sasuke stands there, utilizing the full power of snake sage mode. They recoil in fear, Sasuke asks Naruto if he's strong enough to defeat him now, or does he regret poking the snake? Yamato uses wood release to try and apprehend Sasuke, who simply mutters the word Tayuya. Knowing what a master wants, Tayuya begins to play a flute, catching Yamato in a genjutsu, making him clench his head in pain and falls down to the ground, releasing his wood release attack. Sasuke mutters sage art, but before he can finish, Orochimaru and Kabuto arrive, telling Sasuke not to waste his chakra on using that technique. Despite Naruto shouting for Sasuke to stay, Uchiha leaves alongside Orochimaru and his whole ragtag group of teens. With a somber heart, Team 7 return back to the village and give a mission report to Jiraiya and Tsunade. Jiraiya realizes that Sasuke must have trained at Ryuchi Cave and learned Sage Mode, an ability that Orochimaru can never use without his own body. That's probably the reason why Orochimaru didn't just take Sasuke's body. He wanted Sage Mode and the Sharingan. He'd be unstoppable. Tsunade asked Jiraiya why he never mentioned this possible, but other summons to give Sage Mode, and Jiraiya shrugs. He, she never asked, so he never thought to mention it. Catching on to Tsunade's wavelength, he tells her it's unlikely Katsuyu has the ability, otherwise she probably would have known. It's upset Tsunade she'd quite like the power. It might have been possible for her and the Slug Summon to train for the power, However, the responsibility of her being Hokage would make that too difficult. Shizune speaks up that she has some free time, and Tsunade likes, she can look into it, which Tsunade would thank her friend for. Shizune reverse summons herself to Shikotsu Forest, where she and Katsuyu begin working together to try and learn how to make Slug Sage Mode. In the off time, Naruto and Sakura have, Sakura would want to train shockingly. She'd been training hard since Sasuke left, but when seeing him like that, she felt so useless. Naruto understands this and will take her to the training grounds, where he begins to teach her the Rasengan. It doesn't take long for Sakura to get the hang of using it, due to her chakra control being so refined, which Naruto had praised her for. Now comes the hard part, adding an elemental change to it. Sakura's chakra and natures in canon were earth and water. I feel like water makes more sense to her, so we'll use that. Sakura would begin to learn how to add water to the Rasengan, and a parallel on Naruto learn the Rasen Shuriken. While she begins training, Asuma would still end up dying and all that occurs. Sakura would end up perfecting the water release Rasengan, being able to spin it very quickly. Naruto says that I need a cool name for the Rasengan and comes up with Rasen Typhoon. Just like normal, Team 10 would attempt to leave, however Naruto and Sakura would be with Kakashi when he finds them, and all six leave to fight Kakazu. Shikamaru takes away Hidan, leaving the five to fight off the mercenary. Naruto would use Sage Mode and begins to easily evade all Kakazu's attacks. Waiting for Shikamaru to exploit his blood pan, which does occur, taking away one of Kakuzu's hearts. Kakuzu stands back up like normal, which makes Naruto and everyone else panic. He shouts for Sakura that they need to stop him now, which she nods at. She creates her Rasen Typhoon as Naruto creates the Rasen Shuriken, 
the two rush at Kakuzu. He attempts to dodge, however Kakashi and Choji stop him from either side. He is sandwiched from both sides by two powerful attacks, which instantaneously kill him. Naruto probably could have done it himself, but having Sakura there had that extra overkill they needed to kill that scarecrow mercenary looking guy. I don't know how to else describe Kakuzu. Sasuke would slaughter Orochimaru and end up absorbing him, leaving the hideout. The sound forward thanks Sasuke and would all go their separate ways, becoming rogue ninja yet again to do whatever they like, leaving Sasuke to go and form the heavy. The executioner blade so far underwater, so we get to a need to get a different legendary blade, which would be bothersome for Sasuke, but he'd agree. They'd end up finding the Thunder Swords, which we get to in our wield. As canon, Sasuke would run to Daedara, and their fight is definitely different. When the landmines are placed, Sasuke would go into Sage Mode. He can tell where they are with Sharingan. He's able to use his Sage Art in organic animation to make chunks of the ground move up at Daedara, making him have to dodge. They end up impacting his Clay Dragon, which takes him down to ground level. Daedara would end up using his C4, with the results ending the same, leaving Daedara out of Chakra. Sasuke would have lots more chakra due to his constant intake of Sage Chakra as well as him not exerting himself as much. So when Daedara goes to activate his C0, Sasuke uses inorganic animation to make the trees extend wooden spikes into Daedara's arms and chest, stopping him from using his self-destruction jutsu. Daedara begins to curse out Sasuke as Uchiha falls back into a base, approaching him using his Sharingan to cast Genjutsu on Daedara to try and learn where Itachi is. Once realizing Daedara doesn't know, Sasuke deems him useless and decapitates him with his sword. Over with Team 7 and Team 8, Naruto and Kiba would both be using their Sage Modes, trying their best to sense out Sasuke's chakra, getting a lead. They begin chasing him and his group, which Karen would tell Sasuke. When realizing he's being pursued, he activates his own Sage Mode, and tells everyone to get close. Using inorganic animation, he makes the ground open for the four of them to jump in, moving underground with the terrain shifting as they move, allowing them to get away since Sage Mode can't sense them underground. Jirai would still request to go to the rain village meanwhile, and would still find Pain's hideout, where he enters Sage Mode, however the circumstances are different. Due to his Sage Mode being perfected, he's doing a lot better than he previously was, since it gives him added strength and better sensing capabilities. With his skills, he's able to destroy the Naraka and Animal Path using well-timed Jutsu, with help from Fukushaku and Shima. When the Ashura Path attempts to blindside the Toad Sage, he's able to sense him much better, and avoid the oncoming attack before staring down the remaining paths of Pain. Determining Jiraiya's strength, Nagato had realized that he can't defeat him there in the rain, since he needs to hold back. If he could use his full power, then he probably could defeat Jiraiya. Using a Shinra Tensei, he slams Jiraiya into the wall before scattering the other paths, getting away with Conan. Jiraiya walks over to the bodies of the paths he destroyed and begins to examine them. He grabs onto one of the black rods and pulls it out, before sensing Nagato in the distance and dropping it in a panic, falling out of Sage Mode. He explains to Fukusaku and Shima what he sensed and how he needs to go there and examine it. Fukusaku warns his student that he might not make it back in one piece, but Jiraiya is pretty reckless. He asks Fukusaku and Shima to take the bodies back to leave for autopsy, as he himself leaves to find Nagato. Back with the heavy, they'd arrive to face Kisame, where Sasuke goes ahead to fight off his brother alone. He and Tachi start their fight off normally, until Sasuke bursts out Sage Mode to dominate him. Tachi would begin to examine Sasuke in Sage Mode, to determine the best way to defeat it. Sasuke would be using his typical attacks just with the added power of Sage Mode on top of it. It doesn't really look like a change, since Itachi would just be less suppressed in the battle. Once getting the opportunity, Sasuke uses inorganic animation to make the ground bend around Itachi, which confuses the Uchiha. He tries to dispel what he thinks is a Genjutsu, but is surprised when he finds out it's reality. Sasuke raises up his hand and uses Sage Art, Kiri, throwing a massive lightning dragon at Itachi, with both blue and red mixed in together. Due to the added speed at which I think it would be thrown, as with well Itachi already being preoccupied, I think Itachi would end up dying in the explosion since he wouldn't get a chance to activate Susano. After the fight, Sasuke would be found by Toby, where he offers to tell Sasuke the truth about his brother. As there's a leaf search team after him, they'd go into the Kamu dimension, where he'd tell Sasuke about Danzo, making him awaken his Mangekyo and create Taka, all that good stuff. Back with our favourite pervy Sage, he'd continue moving, arriving near the location where Nagato is. Before I can get to Nagato, he'd be hit with a Shinra Tensei, as a 6 pass of pain or stunned over Jiraiya, with Nagato getting 2 more passes along the way. Jiraiya isn't in Sage Mode, and Pain won't hold back, the odds aren't exactly in his favour. All the paths begin attacking Jiraiya, with him struggling to keep up due to all the paths working together to take him down. Jiraiya would know he can't defeat Pain, so he'd power through all his pain, beginning to question what happened, which I'm sure Pain would explain, but Hanzo betrayed them and killed Yahiko. While this happens, Jiraiya ends up destroying the Naraka path yet again, so no King of Hell. Hearing this makes Jiraiya upset that he couldn't be there to save his student. 
He tells Nagato it's not too late to turn his life around. They can together make his dream come true. Don't let Yaiko's death be what causes mass murder. At this, the astral path lands a blow on Jiraiya, blowing off his arm, as Pain tells Jiraiya it's too late for sympathy. Only Pain. At this point, Jiraiya will give up trying to survive. He knows that he'll die here, so in his dying moments, he'll set his student on the right path. He pulls out his first ever book that he wrote, telling Nagato about his dream. It moved Jiraiya, who was inspired to help. That boy isn't gone yet, he can still be him. As he gets stabbed with some black rods, Jiraiya tells Pain that it's okay. Even if he dies here, he'll still believe in him. He's still the student from his prophecy, whether he likes it or not. The paths of Pain have the chance to finish off Jiraiya, but instead they don't. They carry him over to Nagato and slump him against the wall so he can look at the Uzumaki in his dying moments. Nagato apologizes to Jiraiya for this and how he was merely blinded by his pain and hatred. Before Jiraiya passes, he grows a little grin over his face, as he mutters that at least his life wasn't full of failures. He asks for Nagato to protect Naruto and make sure he grows into a powerful shinobi, capable of bringing peace to the world. Nagato agrees, telling Jiraiya that he can bring him back, but Jiraiya tells him not to. He's accepted his death. His eyes close, he tells Nagato he's leaving it up to him now. With Jiraiya's death, Nagato and Konoe begin to mourn as they end up burying Jiraiya, but wanting to use his body out of respect. Konoe turned to paper and rushed off to the Hidden Leaf, where she arrives just inside the Yamanaka barrier. Immediately, numerous shinobi would rush over to her, recognizing her as a member of the Akatsuki, however she tells him to calm down. She needs to speak with the Hokage, which I'm sure Tsunade would agree with. Tsunade would walk over with Fukusaku and Shima on her shoulders, where Kona explains what happened. Kona tells her that her and Nagato will be protecting Naruto, which Tsunade immediately would not allow her to do. She's enraged and interesting in them since they just killed Jiraiya. In return for allowing them to protect Naruto, as well as residents on leave, they will give them valuable information about Uchiha Madara. Since that is extremely valuable, Information Tsunade would reluctantly agree. Since Danzo is in the leaf, and since they're untrusting of him, they'd keep Nagato in his safe location and only send the pass of pain as well as Conan, where Conan gets interrogated by Ibiki. When Naruto returns and learns about Jiraiya's death, he'd be quite distraught, rushing away to be alone. With Naruto on his own, the person to find him would be the diva path. When Pain introduces himself, Naruto straight up punches him in the face, enraged that he killed his sensei. Jiraiya has been with him for a lot longer than he was in canon, so this hurts him even more. Pain tells Naruto to calm down, using the other paths to hold him back. After explaining what happened as well as the circumstances of his master's death, Naruto would begin to calm down significantly. Meanwhile, Team Taco would still be sent to collect B. With Sasuke Sage Mode, B would be struggling more than he originally was. He still pretend to die in a Matarasu, however with the sensory abilities Sage Mode grants, Sasuke can tell that this wasn't true, it was merely a ruse. He tells B to stop hiding, which makes the Eight Tails Jinchuriki panic. Gyuki tells B to go and find A, which B agrees to. He begins to try and get Raikage A, using stuff like Ink Clones in his version 2 cloak, to begin to escape the Uchiha, with Sasuke mainly dominating him. He stabs B through the gut, telling them that if he's near death, he'll still be useful. Before B can pass out, Raikage A arrives, landing a hard blow on Sasuke, flinging him backwards as he looks at the Uchiha in rage. He's even more angry than he was at him during the summit. A couple of the shinobi tend to beat as A rushes at Sasuke, his rage at the max. Although Sasuke has his sage mode, he won't have any knowledge about how to use his Shushano, making him get manhandled or beaten to the ground in a bloody heap. Before A can kill Sasuke, Toby arrives, sucking him and Team Taka into Kamali, before he escapes himself, leaving A angry and B okay, still in possession of the cloud. In the time period between Jiraiya's death and the Five Kage Summit, Naruto would be training with Pain and Conan, making him much stronger. He learns how to counter everyone at Pain's abilities, including stuff like Chewbacca Tensei, teach him how to think fast in a fight. He'd essentially have bodyguards everywhere he goes, with Conan and Pain surrounding him. The Leaf would be given all the intel that the duo have on Toby, like how he can only stay in Kamui for 5 minutes and stuff like that, which would be extremely valuable in taking down the remaining Akatsuki member. Danzo would hate having them be on the Leaf's side. Nagato is extremely unreliable, he could probably turn on them at any minute. He wants a renegon for himself so he can become a Hokage and make the leaf into his image, a better image. Shizune and Katsuyu would figure out a way for someone to enter Slug Sage Mode or a part of Tsunade and Sakura. Tsunade wants to go learn this power, so he asks the council for some time off. While Koharu and Homura are against it, Danzo's actually for it. Besides, while she's gone, they'll need a new Hokage to take over, so Tsunade and Sakura leave to achieve Sage Mode. Over with Sasuke after his defeat from A, he's been training hard. He's been trying to use his Susano, getting a bit better with using it, but not by much. 
After what happened with B, A would make sure it doesn't happen again. He'd be training him even more, teaching him how to use a lightning cloak, which combined with Bijou cloaks and transformation, makes him even more deadly. A also makes sure B's locked deep within the cloud and guarded by numerous shinobi to avoid the Katsuki getting him. This means that Kisame is unable to find him or gift him Samihara, leading to him never getting inside Samihara to get into Turtle Island later on. While Tsunade is gone, Akage Summit would be called, with Danzo attending since he makes sure Tsunade can't make it back. Due to Kiba and Sasuke's relationship, when he hears about Danzo declaring Sasuke's murder, he would be distraught and enraged. He would be with Hinata while this occurs, who questions Kiba about what he's going to do. He tells her to get on Akamaru and the duo rush off to find Naruto. Meanwhile, Naruto would be with Sai, Tendo, Pain, and Conan when the Cloud Shinobi arrive. Before Naruto can get his beating, Tendo would use Shinra Tensei to get rid of them and they'd leave. Kiba and Hinata arrive with Kiba telling Naruto the situation and telling him that they need to go. Paying question to Naruto, who tells him and Conan to stay in the village, asking Sai to create Ingbird, which he agrees to. The four shinobi unit would then head out to find the Raikage and stop him. They find him in the land of snow, where Naruto summons his plea, falling on deaf ears as the cloud shinobi leave. Kiba tells Naruto that they need to find Sasuke and stop him from getting killed, which Naruto would agree with, obviously. The four man unit head out using stage mode and Kiba's Inazuka senses to seek out Sasuke. Sasuke would still fight the Kage using stage mode, doing better than he originally was. However, these people are Kage and they're not even his target. He still kills Danzo by stabbing through Karin on the bridge. The Sasuke search team find him on the bridge when Naruto barks at Sasuke. The serpent turns around, staring at them, asking what they plan to do. When Naruto lets out a whelp that they'll bring him back, it makes Sasuke laugh maniacally. He tells them they'll die right there as he lunges into battle. Naruto and Kiba go into their respective stage mode as Hinata uses a Byakugan to try and back them up. Sai will be trying to strategize since Naruto and Kiba are naive and Hinata is busy. Sasuke begins to battle, primarily Naruto and Kiba, using his serpent bodies to slide around. He then uses a Masaroso on the edge of the bridges and uses real organic animation to make them rush at Naruto and Kiba, which luckily for them, they dodge. Naruto and Kiba begin to maneuver around the constantly bending bridge as Hinata shouts to them where Sasuke is, helping them dodge his Shidori. Annoyed that Hinata is stopping him from claiming his targets, Sasuke rushes at her ready to stab her. Hinata shows how she isn't a damsel in distress as she dodges using the gentle fist to attack him, getting a couple good shots in. Kiba tells Akamaru that they should try the technique. They both rush at Sasuke, leaping in as they act the fang over fang. There's something up with it though. It begins to glow blue as Kiba channels Wind Chakra into it, just like Asuma did him back in episode 4. Sasuke senses this going to dodge, however Sai holds him using ink snakes. While Sasuke can break out, he's hit hard in the gut, sending him flying off the bridge. As Sasuke stands on the water, his rage begins to flare, causing him to activate his Susano, terrifying everyone watching. Luckily for them, Sasuke quickly drops it due to his eyes messing up. Naruto leaps in with Rasengan, which Sasuke meets with Chidori, having the usual interaction leading the Sasuke to get Itachi's eyes. Gara finds the Leaf Ninja and takes them back to the Leaf with Tamara and Kankura to find the Hokage. Luckily, Tsunade, Shizune, and Sakura are back, so Gara can report the events of the summit directly to the Hokage. With the death of Danzo, Naruto would be brought into the Leaf and placed in a hidden location to avoid anyone finding him. It makes him much safer than he was prior. Naruto would still be sent to Turtle Island when Conan decided to accompany him. While Pain wants to, Conan reasons that his numbers will make it much better for him to be in the war, which Pain would agree with. Kiba also decides to go with Naruto, which everyone agrees to allow, since what is Kiba going to do that will really make an impact? Besides, they have Hana, Kiba's sister, so if they need any Inzuku clan techniques, they always have her. While on the ship to get to Turtle Island, everyone will be relaxing, except for Mike Guy, until they feel the ship shake. Guy asks if they all felt that, or was it just him feeling sick, until they feel it shake again. And from the water, a dragon sprouts out, attacking the people on the ship, which jumps up blocks using wood release. Colonel recognizes who it is as a wooden constructor is destroyed, and Kisame stands there grinning. Guy stands up to try and fight Kisame off, but feeling seasick, falling back over to lean over the side, throwing up. Clearly, it won't be useful in this fight. Yamato tries to attack Kisame, which doesn't work, as the shark skin beast merely breaks the construct. He leaps at Yamato to crush his throat, however, Naruto manages to kick him away. Naruto draws his sword and activates stage mode, which makes Kisame chuckle. Okay, Nine Tails brats, let's see those legendary sword skills that took out this Ozabaza. To Kisame's shock, Naruto's doing quite well against him. His sword skills aren't as refined as Kisame's, however his unpredictable fighting style as well as his strength is what gives Naruto the slight advantage. Kisame uses Samihara to absorb Naruto's chakra and give it to Kisame to make him stronger, not realizing what he's done. 
As he takes in the Senjutsu, he transforms into a stone toad, cursing out Naruto. Everyone begins to celebrate the Nine Tails, Jinchuriki, with Kiba even telling Naruto to take his sword, which Naruto does. Conan doesn't hear alright about this. He tells me it's too strong to merely go down like that. As everyone celebrates, they don't notice the stone toad begins to liquefy and turn into a weird mushy puddle. At this, Conan realizes what this means. There is nothing but a mere water clone. She tells Naruto to destroy Samihara quickly, which confuses him as he blankly stares at her. He does listen, creating a Rasengan ready to destroy it. However, the last second, Kisami leaps out, grabbing Naruto in a headlock. He snaps his neck, and there's no more issues. No one can move to save Naruto quick enough, as they all look in horror at the chuckling shark. For Kisami can though, the green blur rushes through the air and kicks Kisami off the boat, as Mike Guy stands there, holding back his sickness. He goes into the seventh gate and hits Kisami with a hard Hirodora, leading to Kisame committing seppuku, giving Toby the info about where he died. Everyone arrives on Turtle Island, with Naruto going to master the QB. He goes into the waterfall of truth, however the evil Naruto has a QB cook around him instead of his regular design. He tells Naruto that he should breast his hatred of Sasuke, Pain, Fukusaku. They all cause him more trouble than they should. Naruto activates Sage Man and straight up punches the QB Naruto. They begin fighting with the evil Naruto going to more and more tales, eventually entering the 8th, which begins to beat down Naruto. Before he can enter the 9th, he is met by Minato, who would talk down Naruto's hatred, causing it to fade away. Naruto will realize it happened, and would smile, knowing that his dad saved him. Moving along, he'd end up achieving KCM1 and Mi and Kushina, all that good stuff. He also begins to learn how to use the Biju Dharma, while failing to do so. Due to his mastery of Sage Moon this timeline, Naruto has he's able to enter it while in KCM, however it does cause more stamina drain and more risk of becoming a stone toad. Kabuto would still find Turtle Island since it's a general location of where the island is, since Kisame is still sent back the information. The whole thing would end up happening where Yamato is taken to make Waizetsu and become Guru Guru. While this happens, Kiba and Kono would be on Naruto, so they don't know it, so that all stays the same. When Naruto goes to leave Kiba and Conan, he would be stopped. The person to try and convince him would instead be Fukusaku instead of Uruka, since Uruka and Naruto never really interacted. Naruto, I've had the honor of watching you grow. I saw you become a man who could truly be called a hero. This war, it's all about you. I can't watch you die like Jiraiya boy. You resemble him so much, which is why. As Fukusaku talks, he uses a sealing jutsu on every shinobi surrounding the toad, except for Kiba, Konan, Akamaru, and Naruto. You best come back in one piece. Fukusaku smiles at his son, who smiles back, leaving with Kiba, Konan, and B when he catches up. Nagato would be situated deep under the leaf with the paths of pain all scattered among the different divisions to best defeat their opponents and get real-time reports on what's occurring, without needing to go to report to Inuichi, who then reports it to everyone else. The human path will be situated at HQ since he won't be useful in the war, so he can inform in real time. Over the commando unit, the animal path will be situated with them. Using the chameleon, they all begin to move on the summit while cloaked to avoid getting attacked along the way. They arrive where they find the editensi all moving. We do have a sensory ninja, however he struggles to sense him due to data and sorcery arguing about their respective art forms. Taking their chance, they position themselves behind the Edo and they all attack their strongest attacks at once. Immediately, data, sorcery, Shin, and any other fodder with them is all taken down to either conquerors, puppets, or size inks attacks. It leaves them all shocked as they are unable to do anything and are merely stuck from their traps. Shin and sorcery end up fading like normal and that whole thing would occur. Inside leaves the third division and everyone else keeps moving on the chameleon. They were to assist the 5th division against the Edo Tensei, where Mifune handles Hanzo and all that good stuff. The animal path summons a massive dog and begins to beat up Kimimaru, doing quite well to break him apart easily. Over with the 3rd division, the Ashura path will be used with them, since he is a very heavy attacker and that can be useful when assisting the others. Zabuza Haku and the other two Kekigenka users rock up, however the scene isn't very emotional since in this timeline Zabuza then became good and changed his outlook, and Team 7 never saw them as more than opponents. So they end up battling, so to speaking, leading to Zabuza being controlled to summon the Seven Ninja Swordsmen. With the First Division, the Prayer Path will be situated with them. The fights will be the same with Dari fighting the Golden Silver Brothers, where he seals away Ginkaku. The change arrives when Ginkaku enters his version 2 cloak. The Prayer Path lunges at Ginkaku, clinging onto its back like Chaozo on Nappa. As the Pseudo Jinchuriki begins to try and thrash it off, it begins to absorb its chakra, taking the version 2 cloak off the Edo Tensei body. It allows for Dari to slash Kinku in half and allow the Senior Corps to rush in and seal him. Due to not possessing the Rinnegan, Toby doesn't attack to collect the gold since he doesn't have the Gedo Mazu to cause a distraction, so he doesn't have any Nine Tails Chakra right now. Over the 4th Division will be the Diva Path up front with Gara ready for battle. He won't get much action though as he had a tendency of throwing the coffin to the night. 
Would the medical corpse be the Narakopath? With his king of hell, he'd be healing people at such a speed that it makes Sakura look useless. Wait a second, does she need help with that? The small squadron Naruto has with him we managed to escape to Hell Island and get past the barricade that the Shinobi Alliance made to stop a Jinchuriki, which was stopped by a Jinchuriki. Take play, guys. Before we're all running to Raikage and Tsunade, with Adam and not letting them out, a short scuffle would ensue and Naruto would do even better than his cannon stuff due to his unpredictable fighting style and added strength to his sage mode stacked on KCM. Instead of being tasked to fight in the Dynamo, Black Zetsu was tasked with finding Nagato and making him use really intensity on Madara. In the night, you'd eventually find Nagato underneath the ground, which Nagato can tell, being able to just tell he's there with his sensory abilities. Using the human path, he asked Inuichi to put him in contact with Naruto and Conan, which the Yamanaka clan member agrees to. Nagato tells Conan that he's grateful for everything she did for him. If it weren't for her and Yaiko, he would have been dead long ago. He tells Naruto to carry on his and Jiraiya's legacy. Never can forget the people who died for him. Nagato would use Rene Tensei at the last second to revive any casualties for the Alliance, before dying before Zetsu can control his body. Black Zetsu takes one of the Renegon out of Nagato's skull and would give it to Tobi, who would implant it, begin to address to his new eye. He would also begin to make his Jinchuriki overnight, since sleep is for the week, and they all be ready for the next day. Over in the Shinobi Alliance, we all notice his pain's body has got a limp, realising that he's dead. They all smile and thank Nagato, and they realise that in his last moments, he brought everyone back to give them a fighting chance. The next day, Naruto would end up running into Itachi, where Naruto ends up quickly spitting out Shisui's eye, casting Koto and Matsukami on Itachi, turning him to the side of the Alliance. It was much more easier than they thought it would be. Since Nagato was never there, Itachi doesn't know where Kabuto is, so Naruto decides to help him. He activates Sage Mode and tells Itachi which way Kabuto is, which Itachi thanks him for leaving. To be honest, not many changes really appear here. Naruto sends clones to help fight off the Zetsu, one goes to the 4th Division, Madara shows up and Rex, and Naruto meets up with Tobi and his Jinchuriki. Since Naruto and B are both Jinchuriki, they begin fighting off two Jinchuriki, with Naruto fighting Roshi and Utakata, and B against Han and Yagura. Kiba and Akamari fight against yu so where they'd be fighting all out due to her being very feline, which the monster doesn't take too kindly to. Conan and Fu would be fighting across the sky with their respective wings, with Conan dominating due to Fu not exactly being strong, with neither various Conan, but she has more than just wings. With Samehada, Naruto is doing much better since he can absorb the Biju Chakra, but it doesn't help him that much. It leads to Kokua trying to break Pia of Obito's control, and then Naruto meets Son Goku and all that good stuff. Itachi and Sasuke meet up, but they arrive at Kabuto's location, who shows off his Sage Mode, which Sasuke doesn't find impressive. He assumes his own version of Sage Mode, telling Itachi that his inorganic animation works the way it does, against Kabuto. Both snakes rush each other, shifting the terrain around them in a battle that'd be crazy to watch. Imagine it, it'd be so cool that words just cannot justify it. End result is the same though, with Itachi casting Izanami, and releasing the Edotense. Sasuke then revives Ochirochimaru, and then leaves to revive the Kage. When Naruto gets Shocker from Son Goku and befriends Kurama, he would enter Sage Mode in the form since again he has mastery in the form to a level leagues above what he did in canon. So he'd be even stronger when using his Kurama avatar, and he ends up getting the Biju Chakra before they're sealed. To help him out, Naruto summons Gamabunta to the battlefield in an attack position, where everyone who isn't beat climbs onto the toad once the Kurama avatar dissipates. Madara rocks up having placed the Kage in a near death state, and Obito summons the Gero Mazo, where he begins to make it the Jubi. Now I know what you're thinking. How does he do that when he didn't get the gold? Well, Black Zetsu could just get it for him after getting the Rinnegan. And even if he didn't, Obito could get it himself under the darkness of night. It's not that hard, really. Conan, Kakashi, and Gaia begin fighting against Obito. Kakashi and Gaia would be hesitant to fight him, however, Conan is on the exact opposite end of the spectrum. She wants him dead for killing Nagato and controlling them all. Naruto rocks up, telling them they won't let his friends die, and they all leap on the Jubi. The Shinobi Alliance arrives, and Shikaku and Inuichi are wasted by the Jubi the need to remove the brains as well on the operation. A big change arrives here when the Jubi uses a wooden spike barrage down the Shinobi Alliance. Since Hinata doesn't like Naruto that way, she doesn't leap in the way to take it for him. Instead, it is Conan. Naruto looks in horror as he hears the spike's impact and opens his eyes to see Conan... fine? He looks up and sees Gamabunta standing there, having took the majority of the spikes to save the Shinobi Alliance. Gamabunta collapses, making Naruto panic. He rushes over, looking Chief Toe in the eyes, crying as he does so. He tells him to just go back to Miyaboku, Ubuntu wishing he could. He's taking too much damage, just returning and making it harder on Kichi. He tells Naruto that he needs to keep everyone safe. That is the role of the Chief Toad after all. Naruto smiles a bitter smile as Gamabunta closes his eyes and dies, proofing his way where his dead body lands back at Miyaboku. The death impacts Naruto much more. Ubuntu has been there ever since he was a baby, and this would be much more painful than losing Neji. He looks at Obito dead in the eyes, who stares back grinning. He remarks that he feels the same pain, it's okay. 
He'll be alive in the infinite Tsukuyomi. Naruto shouts out, while that does sound pretty good, it chiefs those roles to keep everyone safe. He can't just go into a dream world yet. He gives everyone a Kyubi Kuro camp, but they all begin fighting, rallying it to Madara, Obito, and the Jubi. The scuffle goes the same, which is to say futile. Sakura would even use Sage Mode, just a tiny bit more, that's like 0.0001% difference, so not much. The only diff uh, difference I can really think of is that after this, they learn about Senjutsu effect in Jubito earlier, but not using Sage Mode. But that's really it, to be honest. I'm sorry if this feels a bit lackluster, but don't worry. We'll be carrying Naruto the Last and the Boruto movie, if you guys want it. I understand if you guys feel this is a cop-out, I'm not going to make changes for the sake of making changes, know what I mean? I could, but I wouldn't be proud of the end product and you guys wouldn't enjoy it, so this is the best compromise. In the time after the war, Naruto and Konoma return to Miyaboku and end up setting up a spy network. As Chief Toad, Naruto has lots of responsibilities, like taking care of all the toads on Miyaboku, as well as international missions for a variety of reasons, meaning he can't be in the leaf anytime he wants. He still does come back whenever he has some time off though, and would spend time with his friends. I know some people are going to ask, so I'm going to clear this up now. Naruto and Conan aren't dating. That'd be really weird. Conan is like Kushina's age, and plus her heart still wants Yaiko. And, even if those two points weren't a factor, Naruto in this timeline doesn't really care about women or romance. In the leaf, not much re really changed here from canon. I still think Neji would have died saving Hinata in the war, so nothing changed with the Hugo clan as a whole. Kibo would be training hard, with everyone seeing him as a candidate for the 7th Hokage. He would be training hard, learning how to channel Wind and Fire Chakra into his Fang over Fang, to make him much more deadly. He still hasn't perfected Sage Mode yet due to him being afraid of turning into a Stone Toad. That's a fate worse than death, at least to him, and if he doesn't need to risk it, he won't risk it. After two years, a Rene Festival would be about to arrive. Kiba, Shino, and Hinata would be hanging out, with Kiba asking if any of them are going to get someone a gift. Shino says no, since he isn't interested in romance, and Hinata would also say no. She just hasn't found that special someone. Awkwardly, Kiba says he hasn't either. Hinata tells them that she has to go and waves goodbye to her friends as she returns home. Shino realises that Kiba bought Hinata a gift, which she confirms quite embarrassed about. He can't give it to her though, she doesn't like him that way. Seeing the pain in his friend's heart, Shino tells Kiba that he'll never know unless he tries before he himself walks away. Later on, Kiba and Akamara would be walking around the leaf not knowing what to do. He'd be muttering to himself about Hinata until he hears Hinata call him over and looks to see her with Sakura, you know, and the others all eating. He'd go over and they'd all enjoy a meal, with Kiba not being able to bring up his feelings to her, afraid of what she'll say. After the meal, when Hinata was returning home, Kiba would try and get the courage to give her a gift. He chases after her where he sees Toneri kidnapping her. In rage, he shouts to let her go as he goes and Akamaru goes to begin chasing her. They begin destroying puppets as they rush towards her, saving her in the nick of time. When assembling a team to send to save Hinabi and stop the moon, Kakashi would call Naruto to the village, who agrees to help. Also, Kiba would request to be on the team, as would Hinata, with Kakashi agreeing after Naruto puts a good word in for both of them. Then, the six all leave to go and save Hinabi from the Otosuki. Since for some reason Sai only made four birds for five people to fly on in canon, an extra person would mean more people have to share a bird. So Naruto would share with Sai and Kiba shares with Hinata, all the while struggling to give Hinari his gift. And, you know, you could have Akamaru sharing with Sakura in a really comedic scene. They would come across the Genjutsu pool, where Kiba and Hinata's dreams end up linking through a random scarf Hinata had on her. She sees Kiba's memories of teammate first meeting, sees her and Kiba's numerous sparring matches, and even sees the other day after she left, realising that Kiba likes her in that way. When they get broken out of the Genjutsu, everyone continues swimming downwards. Toneri would stop Hinata and tells her the same thing, with Kiba and Akamaru bursting out of the water to save her. But Fang over Fang, they end up breaking the puppet, with Toneri saying the same things as the puppy body crumbles to the ground. Meanwhile, the other four come across a weird crap, however it isn't really a fight. With Naruto there to help him, he just enters a crime avatar, and with two punches, he caves the crab's skull in easily. The Hinabi rescue team continue moving, coming across a desolate ninja village, where everyone splits up to search for clues. Kiba and Hinata begin going around together, where they do those cute little things like removing spiderwebs from one another, drinking out each other's hand, and Hinata rubbing ointment on Kiba's back. Kiba would tell Hinata that he has something to give her, which she asks what it is. Overhearing Kiba and Hinata talking, Naruto tells Sai to be quiet and listen, confusing Sai. He does however play along, and the duo begin listening to Kiba and Hinata talk. Kiba tells Hinata that he's been wanting to give her this for a while now, and goes in his bag, grabbing a gift out of it and giving it to her. She takes it and sees his first ever picture teammate took together in a frame. She tells Kiba that she loves it, thanking him. Hinata goes to say something else, but Kiba's cowardice comes to the surface as he tells Hinata that they have to go to the others real quick, leaping out the window, Vakamaru following, hitting Kiba in midair, making them both tumble to the ground. He 
He looks up and sees Naruto on the side grinning, making him frown that they were both listening. Everyone continues moving where they come across Hamura, who just spits up that weird genjutsu ball, revealing everything to Inata, just like normal. Then, Toneri rocks up and steals Hinata, angering Kiba. He activates his sage mode, telling Toneri to give Hinata back. Hinata chose to come with me, but even if she didn't, how can you face me with that uneven form? Kiba doesn't have an answer as Toneri and Hinata leave for his castle. Kiba would begin moping and would need to get stabbed out of it by someone. Shikamaru offers to do it, but Naruto tells him not to. He will. He goes up to Kiba and tells him that he doesn't understand how he feels really. He never really felt love, but he knows someone who figured all that out, so that might help. Naruto uses summoning Jutsu and summons Fukusaku to the location, asking him to help Kiba. The two tells Kiba that sitting around moping will make Hinata like him even more. When he impressed his wife, it took him three years, but he did it through determination. He's lived a long life, and he's seen people lose the love of their lives to someone else. Don't let yourself become one of them. This speech motivates Kiba as he thanks Fukusaku, and everyone leaves, with Pa going back to Miyaboku. Everyone rushes straight for Tsunari, with Kiba using Sage Mode to try and send Sinata. He rushes away with Akamaru, leaving the rest of the group behind as he goes to save the girl he loves. He comes across the puppet Hinata and begins attacking him. He tells her to snap out of it, and this isn't her. He loves her, and he won't let her be a puppet for someone else. That isn't what love is. This speech allows Hinata to repel Toneri's mind control as her and Kiba stare down Toneri. He asks how they plan to defeat him, when using a weak form like that. Kiba looks down and smirks slightly. Sometimes, you gotta take risks for the people you love. He looks back up, however he's different. His face is normal, besides from the toad pupils and pigmentation. Wait, is Kiba mastered sage mode? Naruto rushes in and Toneri blasts him away. Then his eyes start hurting, he gets the tensor gone fully. Naruto and Kiba fight off Toneri, and Naruto saves Toneri from dying. Just gonna slip all over it, since it's pretty much the same, nothing new there, except Kiba's there, but what's he really gonna do? When going back to the pool, Naruto tells Toneri to come back with him. He can make up for his sins, just like Conan is, and he won't have to have the prejudice against him be brought up. Toneri would actually accept this offer, and actually returns to Earth, instead of staying on the moon. Kiba and Hinata hold hands as they rush through the memory pool. Kiba and Yuji are fang over fang, carrying him and Hinata out of the cave where they kiss in the air, in a beautiful spectral to behold. Toneri, Kona, and Naruto would end up running the spy network together, with Toneri making up for everything that he's done. He'd even find a valuable necklace and give it to Hinabi to try and make up for what he did, which she thanks him for. Kiba and Hinata would end up marrying and having two kids, Boruto and Himawari. Kiba also ends up becoming the seventh Hokage and lives out his dream life with Sasuke so becoming the shadow Hokage. Boruto would be very similar to his canon self. This is because his father is still the Hokage, which is upsetting for him, however there are some small changes in his power. Due to being an Inazuka, he had to have a heightened sense of smell like a dog. Speaking of dogs, he'd also have a ninja hound, whose name we'll say is... Sejimaru? Boruto would still end up training with Konohamaru, learning a bunch of new jutsu from him, to try and impress his father. When telling Kiba, he'd be so impressed at his son, learning so much. He tells him that the secret strength they possess is combining power with their hidden power. This confuses Boruto as Kiba merely chuckles. At Himawari's birthday, Kiba would send a shadow clone to attend the party, which doesn't work very well, as it pulls away earlier than he and Naruto's would. It angers Boruto and Sejimaru as they swear to beat him up. The next day, Boruto and his dog would be walking through the street angry. How dare his father do that? As he moves, his nose catches something very weird. It smells like a weird slimy toad and a cup of ramen? Boruto and Sejimaru approach when they smell the scent, and see a man at an end of an alleyway. He calls out to him, but the man merely vanishes in a red blur. Trying to keep up, Boruto begins to chase him down using his nose to find that very potent smell. They leap over rooftops heading towards the forest with Boruto using the fang of a fang trying to hit him. The person turns around slamming his hand to the ground and a toad appears, catching Boruto and Sejimaru throwing them to the ground. And then, the man speaks. Don't make a fuss, eh? Sheesh. You get us busted and then what will we do then? Boruto asks the man who it is as the toad dispels and he lands on the ground, introducing himself as Uzumaki Naruto. Trying to rack his brain, Boruto says that he thinks his father has mentioned him before, but Naruto realizing that his father is Kiba. Boruto demands Naruto to train him, which Naruto agrees, telling Boruto that if he learns the Rasengan, he will teach him. Boruto begins trying to learn the Rasengan, with Naruto actually helping him, giving him the tools necessary to learn how to make the Rasengan, just like Jiraiya did with Naruto. It means that Boruto doesn't have to rely on the ninja tools to get Naruto's approval. Through training with Naruto, Boruto begins to get way stronger and stronger. He learns the Shadow Narrow Boy Jutsu way back from episode 2, and can use it quite well, though the Fang or Fang is definitely much stronger, so I resort to using a much weaker technique. Naruto would be keeping in contact with Conan and Toneri, with some help from Ino and the Yamanaka clan. Toneri tells Naruto that something isn't right, 
He feels like something bad will happen soon, but Naruto also agreeing, saying that he senses it as well. One day while training, both of us Naruto why his eyes are yellow and not blue like he's seen in pictures. Naruto explains that he's currently in Sage mode, but he doesn't know how to turn off anymore, so he's just gonna roll with it, since it doesn't do anything negative for him anyway. That's when Naruto gets an idea. He tells Boruto to come with him as he uses reverse summoning to teleport them both to Miyaboku. Naruto finds Fukusaku and asks him to train the boy, which he agrees to. And so, Boruto learns Sage mode through training with the Toads and sees a prodigy. They laugh it up. Everyone has Sage mode in this series, don't they? Hilarious guys, you're so original, you've all said the same thing in the comment section. The time for the tuning exams arrived, but Boruto prepared. Due to being stronger, he'd ignore Katsuki and wouldn't use any ninja gear since he has no need to. It means that Team 7 cleaned through the first two rounds even easier. While the tuning exams occur, Naruto and Miyabu, Conan, Tonari, and even Sasuke, with Tonari explaining everything to them about what he senses. It means that they'd all be prepared for anything bad to happen, just in case. Naturally, the final rounds of the tuning exams would arrive, with Kiba wishing his son good luck in the fights. Boruto would utilize Sage mode just like Naruto had in the tuning exams all those years ago. But Boruto and Sejimaru begin doing their best, however they aren't using any Inazuka Khan techniques, as they don't see them as useful enough, rather wanting to rely on the techniques they have learned from Naruto and Konohamaru. While this is going on, Naruto will be watching from afar when he senses two powers approaching quickly. He creates a shadow clone that flies away, leaving Naruto there preparing for battle. Before Tsuki arrives, looking at Naruto, recognizing his rich chakra. Naruto begins to fight both up, struggling a bit, having to use KCN2 as well as his sage mode to hang in there. The battle is so explosive that it begins to pull attention away from the tuning exams, as people begin to worry what's happening. They catch glimpses of what's occurring, leading to the Kage or rushing away to go help. Boruto also leaves to go watch what's happening. They see Naruto fighting as well as Sasuke, having got the message from Naruto's clone. Naruto ends up getting kidnapped with way less injuries being caused. Boruto would still be upset by his sensei being stolen, and I believe Sasuke would try to make him feel better, even though this is the first time they're interacting in this timeline. Going with the Kage, Sasuke and Boruto would be with Tonari and Konin. Konin promised to ride Nagato that she'd protect Naruto no matter what, so she'd force herself to go. Tonari is an Otsuki clan member as well, and even if he's weaker than Momoshiki and Kinshiki, his knowledge he has on them is invaluable. Everyone goes and begins to try and fight Naruto, in the spectacle to behold. Kiba will be zipping around using the down on all fours, dodging attacks of ease, with Akamaru helping out to fight the enemies. Kinshiki is then still absorbed by Momo, and that thing still happens. Boruto gets an idea and looks at Sejimaru, barks back to his friend, understanding him perfectly. He begins to charge up her Sengon, trying to put all the power he has into it. So Naruto helps Boruto, as does Kiba, Tsunari, and Konan. With this massive Rasengan, Boruto lets out a shout of, Let's go, Sejimaru! Boruto and his dog begin to run, essentially leap into the air, entering a fang over fang. The Rasengan beneath spin around them, rocketing fang over fang, spinning wildly, shocking everyone as they watch. Momoshiki throws a blast at Boruto, but he rockets straight through it, going to impact Momoshiki, as the Rasengan practically consumes him. Rasen fang over fang! Boruto impacts so hard that it rips him apart, killing him. When Boruto becomes Momoshiki's vessel, Tonari also sees that weird thing stop time as well as Sasuke. He approaches Kiba and says to him that he needs to speak about Boruto. And that's going to be here. Make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below. Well, not next time because this is the finale. Now, why is this finale, you may ask? Well, Boruto is incompleted, and I don't want to start talking about an incomplete series as I'd have to make a lot of assumptions, and that would lead to a lot more retcons and the series would be a lot more jumbled. So this is going to be a perfect finale for it. Now will I come back to the series in the future? Maybe. But for right now, this is the finale. So uh, yeah, let me know what you liked about this series. Let me know what you think the next one's going to be for it. And so uh, yeah, bye!